welcome back. In part three, I'm going to emphasize the link between question and experimental design. All experiments are typically performed under financial, spatial and time constraints. While lots of replication is required, sometimes having too many samples to take at one time can inhibit one's ability to find answers to questions because background conditions change over time, for example light levels. Designs that are overcomplicated for the question, that try to simultaneously address multiple questions, can actually detract from their ability to answer the main question of concern. Presently, because of observed increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide and predictions regarding future increases, there is a great interest in understanding what this will mean for organisms and communities in the future. On this slide, I have provided two very distinct questions and I will argue that they go with two distinct types of experimental designs. The first question is associated with a risk assessment. It identifies two potential trajectories that we may follow with regards to carbon dioxide emissions and asks how these two conditions will affect reefs and the organisms found within them. The second is directed towards a more mechanistic understanding of how two factors influence outcomes separately or in combination. I will show you that question one can be subsumed in question two, but only if the experiment is done on a massive scale. The experiment has one factor that may be called pathway. The future pathways applied are the business as usual, also referred to as RCP 8.5 pathway, illustrated here in blue, where CO2 emissions continue to increase through 2050, and a reduced CO2 emission pathway, or RCP 4.5, represented in red. With these pathways goes an estimated amount of CO2 into the atmosphere by 2100, in addition to an estimation of the average global warming. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will equilibrate with the water column, leading to ocean acidification. The water column will also warm, but the estimates for warming on the GBR are close to the estimates for global warming given here. So this can be examined in a one factorial experimental design where the factor is pathway explored at three levels, present day, RCP 4.5 and RCP 8.5, where each incorporates the appropriate amount of acidification and warming given as offsets from present day levels. As a one factorial experiment with three levels, it is possible to not only work in small tanks with specific organisms, but also to replicate small patch reefs in larger tanks, allowing for flow through water maintained at the appropriate temperature and carbon dioxide levels. Here, the tanks are over a meter in diameter and each level can be replicated four times. They require constant cleaning but with a total of 12 tanks, they can just about be accommodated in the space available. With 12 mesocosms to maintain and supply, it is feasible to conduct experiments over a long period of time and hence monitor the response through one or more annual cycles and inherent seasonal changes. The black lines on these graphs refer to present day maximum monthly means. M -M -M. The second question is directed towards more mechanistic understanding of how two factors influence outcomes separately or in combination. It should remind you of the orthogonal design that was used in the Encore experiment. Here, the factor isn't pathway. Instead, there are two factors, temperature or PCO2 levels, 
also referred to as acidification. Each factor has three levels if you want to incorporate the previous question within its design as illustrated by the red crosses in the table. Significant funds, space and help would be required to run such an experiment. To provide the same level of tank replication, a total of 36 tanks would be required, making it difficult not only to clean them, but also to take measurements at one point in time for all the tanks. Such experiments are typically performed for short periods of time without including seasonal fluctuations, that is, at constant temperature and acidification levels. Typically, they monitor the response of one or two species as opposed to small patch reefs in smaller tanks. For an example, this photo shows one such experiment being performed at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. It takes up a large footprint. The tanks are, however, smaller and single organisms rather than patch reefs are the subject of the experiment. Here, two species of coral are being examined. To conclude, both are large-scale, time-consuming and expensive studies targeting different questions that necessitate different experimental designs. This completes the lecture. Thank you.